Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in the gorgeous mountains of Mehongsan province in northern Thailand. And today we have the special opportunity to be uh, in a Karen hill tribe village community, hanging out with my friend Mook, who is from this village. And so the plan for this afternoon is uh, we are gonna first head up the side of the mountain just a little ways uh, to harvest some ingredients, including some chilies, and especially uh, they're gonna harvest a banana trunk, an entire banana tree trunk stem. This is, so this is the part we want to eat, which is then going to be used in a specific Karen dish that we are going to cook. And so it's going to be, again, an incredible experience, incredibly delicious local and traditional Karen food. And I'm going to share it all with you right now. Mukkup. What is what is the name of the village? Mung Pam. Mung Pam. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm already starting to see some chilies. Karen chilies, which are some of the best chilies that you will find in all of Thailand. Or oh, it's uh, cassava. I think cassava, right? Mansampalang. Whoa! Yeah, this one is huge. Wow. Move back. Knock my cup, my Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a leg sized cassava. Awesome. I, I have seen a lot of cassava, but I don't think I've ever seen a cassava this large. Okay. Maybe we'll set this down for a little bit and we're just going to get some chilies real fast. Okay, cup. D cup. <laughs> the Karen chilies, they're some of my favorite chilies. Not only are they some of the spiciest chilies in Thailand, but also some of the most fragrant, best, especially when they're grown in the mountain like this. They are the best chilies. That is a lot of chilies. <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> Oh, and now. Some type of a, an eggplant. I have, I've seen this before. I'm not totally sure of the English name, but it almost looks like a tomato. But it's an eggplant. By Mangrak. Okay, cup. Lemon basil. Okay. Oh, you got the maku, huh? And they're also saying that right now, because it is the winter, it's really dry in the winter, so that's why there's not as many vegetables and they're not as blooming or as green as normal. Uh, but especially, they said, in the rainy season when all the hills around here are very green and lush. But still, there's a lot. Um, and that lemon basil smells so good. She said she's going to pound it up with chili uh, and make a, a Karen Namprik chili dip using the flowers of the lemon basil and chilies. But as soon as she digs up that uh, galangal, you could smell the aroma of that rhizome galangal. The gingery freshness. Oh man, it smells amazing. They're so good, so fast, and just know all the ingredients. Oh man, I love it. Everything is natural. Everything is literally from the backyard, side of the mountain backyard. I think it's a, a wild jungle banana. That, that is huge. The yuak luai, which is the trunk of the banana tree, is going to go into this dish. This is huge. And so I think uh, Mook said that this type of banana tree is so juicy. Look at the juices coming out of it. And Mook also said that there's no banana fruit on this tree. Or maybe it has it, but there's so, so many seeds because of the wild bananas. But they just water's gushing from the cells of the, the tree. Oh. 
You can lift weights with it. Just to confirm, all of these petals from the banana tree that we are going to discard, they're actually not going to go to waste. The pigs, which are over there, are going to be happy to eat all of them. But we just want the core. This is going to be one of the coolest ingredients, coolest meals ever. Oh, yeah, no, come on. Water. Be careful. <laughs> Just as I went to pick up the camera, the tree fell and leaving the stump and those layers. That is amazing. Uh, and that's exactly what we want is that center, the very core of the banana tree. That's what we want to eat. Oh. Okay. This is so this is the part we want to eat. Honey honey gin dai kap. This is the section. Ah, okay. Nice. Good job. You guys are amazing. Oh my god. Man. They, let me tell you, they, the experience, but the knowledge, that's just life knowledge in the forest on these mountains. We've got all the ingredients. We're going to head back to the house to start cooking. And I can't wait to try uh, the special Karen dish or dishes. They're making a couple dishes that they're going to make for us with these ingredients. Bye bye, Micah! <laughs> Loving this village, so beautiful. Yeah, oh man, and people are so incredibly friendly. Buddy Cobb. And there are about 130 families that live in this village, about 600 or so people. So it's a good size, uh, but not too big, and just Almost, I mean, you can walk, of course, everywhere in this village, and and it's just so peaceful. Okay, I think this is where we're heading. What do you call? Oh, Ying, you got the bamboo, right? That's for the cooking the curry. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah. This is the mountain rice grown here, right? Yes. From your village. Yeah. We're gonna first get started with the Karen mountain rice. Uh, we're gonna put that on to start cooking and then we're gonna begin with the other dishes. Now we're getting started on the kalkua, the roasted rice dish. What is the name again in Kazakaryang? So the first step is taking some of the mountain rice, the mountain rice, and just toasting it over the fire, roasting it. Oh, 
หอมไปเอามาจากไหนอ่ะแล้วคือในมันมีต้นแล้วคือในรส Uh, and she's getting started on the curry, uh, which is going to be made in the bamboo pole uh, using a variety of dry spice. There's uh, makwen, which is similar to prickly ash or similar to related to uh, Sichuan pepper. There's a like a I can't remember the name of that spice, but it's very fragrant. Um, and then there's also coriander seed. Um, and here goes in some dry karen chilies. <laughs> And now some of the fresh spices go in, including galangal and lemongrass. And for the rice, you have to keep on toasting it until it turns brown, until it actually turns more yellow in color, golden in color. But you want all that fragrance, that smoky yellow golden color. And this is Muk's mom, mother, who has come to inspect how it's coming along. Okay, rice is ready? You're ready. Yeah. Oh, it smells so good. It's so mm -hmm. fragrant. Like popcorn almost. Yes. Okay, so two things pounding away now and for the curry paste for the curry. That is one complex curry. So starting with the dry spice, then moving into the fresh spices. Uh, then she added garlic and shallots and lemongrass and kaffir lime leaves and galangal, pounding that, and turmeric, pounding that all together. That is just a medley, a harmony of just vibrant, ultimate vibrant ingredients. Okay. Uh, okay, come on. Then taking the flowers, stripping from the stems, the flowers of the lemon basil. That goes in ultra, incredibly fragrant. And some of the kids have just arrived, so Micah's very happy. <laughs> Mike, are you making them laugh? <laughs> That's gonna roast in the flame for about 30 to 40 minutes, they said, until the, the bamboo, the green... You have to, by the way, you have to use green bamboo, fresh bamboo every time you do this, because then it chars the bamboo, it roasts the bamboo uh, as you cook. Into the roasted rice powder dish, which I'm still not sure how it's all gonna come together and it's something like I've never seen before, is gonna go in a chicken and also the the banana stump that we we harvested. So those are the main ingredients for for that dish. <laughs> Lemongrass, galangal, and a few dry karen chilies are gonna go into a paste or the ingredients, seasoning ingredients that's gonna go into the toasted rice powder. 
with the chicken and the banana stump. Oh, do you mind help? And then the banana stump gets chopped up into little bite-sized pieces. You see like the the airiness of it, almost like the like little segments of it and really what you want is the heart of the banana trunk. What is that? Okay. And another ingredient that she's gonna add to the Kaukua rice powder dish is these are I'm not sure if they're hyacinth beans or some type of, almost like similar to snow peas a little bit, but uh, a type of bean pea uh, that's gonna go in as well, fresh off the bush. Like everything fresh off the bush. And I think it's gonna be chopped up now. Okay, I got it. Okay, got it. Time to start on the toasted rice dish. Chicken goes into the pot, then that uh, pounded paste of lemongrass, galangal, and chilies goes in. Uh, then that eggplant, that type of, and they said it's going to make it a little bit bitter. Uh, so that's going to, but that's also a, a key ingredient in the dish. And I'm already loving the chili dip that they're making. Everything gets the fire treatment on the fire. The chilies are roasted. Lemongrass even gets tossed on the fire, smoked out, burned out. Tomatoes go on and tuanao, which is the fermented soybean discs dried. It's 
So the toasted rice powder goes in last and that immediately starts to thicken it a little bit and makes it starchy uh, and makes, you can immediately see it getting like thicker and heartier. And I'm not sure it's gonna, I think it's gonna boil just for a little bit longer and I think it's ready and I think almost everything is ready and I am extremely ready to start eating. This has been just a fascinating meal cooking learning experience for me and just absolutely impressive how all the ingredients are from right here. Okay, cup. Oh. Okay, the last step, coriander and green onions go in. We are all sitting down to eat again. I don't think I've ever had a meal quite like this. And actually the toasted rice, which is thickened into a like porridge consistency. It's a main dish that you eat along with rice. It's not just a porridge that you eat, it's a main dish. Then the curry came out, you get that poof of all those herbs and that meat. And then we have the chili dip and what a meal and just their incredibly hard work. And everything, what stands out to me is everything is just natural. And I love the communal eating of this meal because it's all one central bowl and you just take bite by bite. You don't take a whole plate of food. So you enjoy the family and community. Okay, let's try. Mm. Oh, Im oh wow, immediately the smokiness of that rice and the toasted ingredients. Oh, that's so good. And I think I got a piece of the um, the banana trunk which has kind of a fibrous stringy texture to it. But the smokiness of that, oh man, that's like the, I mean, it is a porridge consistency. It's thick, but it's wonderfully smoking. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other dish I cannot wait to eat the, the curry cooked in the bamboo with all those herbs and you see the turmeric making it yellow, the lemongrass in there. Oh, wow. Oh, that's incredible. Oh. Oh, and just herbaceous. How do you say pasagariang uh, arroy? Um, Agui. Aguisa. 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 Ah, okay. Aguisa. Aguisa. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's tasty. Both dishes together. Okay, and we still have the namprik, the chili dip to eat with everything as well. A bit more of it. Okay, with the, the roasted sticky rice, that chili dip, there's tomatoes in there, there's fermented soybeans, everything roasted. Oh wow, that namprik is just insane. The smokiness, the umami, the tomatoes, the chilies, the fermented soybean is just what elevates it. Mm. It's just so warming. It's really hearty, filling. You can tell that it's just, it is absolutely the perfect dish for mountains, for colder weather, weather colder temperatures. And I love also how you have the, the texture of the porridge. Um, and then at the same time, you every now and then you get a piece of the vegetable, the eggplant, the bitter eggplant, or the um, 
the banana stump, which has a fibrous kind of a crisp texture to it. For this bite, I got one of the pieces of the eggplant. Mm. Oh wow, yes. Like the bitterness of it, but kind of sweet at the same time and the seeds just erupt out of it. Hello, my cup. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Everything blended together in the bamboo. Wow, that is a flavor. Wow, that was an incredible meal. That was superb. By the time we finish with dinner at 7.30 p.m., the village is just completely quiet. You just hear the natural sounds of the insects, the stars. I don't think I can capture them on the camera, but just the full sky of stars, not polluted by light. It is spectacular. Uh, but that's going to wrap up this just amazing experience learning about Karen food, harvesting our own ingredients, and they are truly just so incredibly knowledgeable about the land and about cooking. Talk about master chefs, man. And I wanna say a huge thank you to Mook uh, for hosting us here in her village. Uh, she actually does tours and I will, she goes, you, you can come to her village, she will take you around and we'll take care of you. So I'll have her link in the description box below. Uh, contact her when you are in Mehong San for a uh, learning experience and an incredible time in this beautiful village in the mountains. And that's going to be it for this video. I want to say a huge thank you for watching. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, uh, click subscribe and also click the little bell icon. And that way you'll immediately get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching and I will see you on the next video.